Hi, my name is Alan Chasey, Vertical Sales Manager for Dynapar Corporation. Today I'm going to show you how to install our Next Gen ST56 series of bearingless encoder. The first thing that you want to do is open the box and make sure all the parts are there. Manual, wiring installation, hardware, cover, pulse wheel, encoder itself, and connector. Once you've confirmed that all the parts are in the box, go over to the motor, in this case it's a 56 C-Face. You want to make sure that the C-Face itself is clean of any rough edges or paint or debris. You also want to make sure that the shaft itself is free of any paint, debris. Make sure that its run out is within tolerance, according to the manual. So the first thing we'll do is disconnect the connector hood, and we're going to mount the encoder. We're going to mount the encoder in such a way that it's conducive to the application. Once the encoder frame is mounted, and you pay particular attention to how it's mounted, the ring, or the male pilot, is facing outward of the encoder. And we're going to take our pulse wheel, we're going to mount the pulse wheel to the motor shaft. Being that this is a bearingless encoder, it's meant for rugged environments, and as you'll notice, has a specific air gap around the encoder body and the wheel. With the new sensing technology in the uh, ST56 series, we have the largest gap in the industry, which allows for uh, reliable operation. So, in order to mount this properly, make sure the screws are facing outward and are only finger tight. We we'll use a straight edge through these two little chamfer points to make sure that the pulse wheel is aligned flush with this part of the housing. That ensures a proper fit. Next, we're going to tighten up the screws using our hex key and our installation is complete. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our connector and we're going to connect it to the encoder. Now, should the application require, we provide a gasket and a cover to mount over the encoder to protect the shaft. We've got power to the unit. The LED is lit green, which we know we've got power. We're going to go ahead and start up the drive. As the motor starts speeding up, you'll notice that the light's flickering, the LED's flickering, so we're getting good pulses and a good readout on the drive. If you'd like to learn more about installation techniques, as far as this product or any of ours, please go to www.dynapar.com. Again, my name's Alan Chasey. Thanks for watching.